Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, I am so excited about this Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn series here. I have a great opportunity here to talk to some wonderful people, guys. We actually did a show before we even came on, <laughs> Amy and Doc, Dr. David. I love it. So we're excited about that today. But guys, I want to welcome you guys that are live right now and those listening later on. Thank you so much for joining uh, Kevin Vaughn on Power Connections. You may ask, hey, what's Power Connections? Power Connections is all about bringing on some powerful people like Miss Amy Moore. Amy Moore, good day to you. How are you, madam? <laughs> very good. Very good. Glad to be here. Oh, thank you so much. And Dr. David Cavazos, how you doing, sir? God bless you, sir. Doing well, Kevin. Ha thanks so much for having us. Uh, thank you so much, Doc, and, and, and Amy, for being with us today. Pr your time is so precious. We thank you so much. Hey, we thank you for your time as well, those listening later on. Hey, guys, I want you to listen up to Amy and Doc here coming up here in a little while, but also I want you to share this out a little later on as well on your platforms, guys. It's all about promotion, right? And you never know what Doc will say today and what Amy will say today will change your life or encourage you to uh, grow in the areas that you need as well. So with that said, hey, Amy, we always love, and Doc, we always love to hear from our guests. Uh, so much going on, on the planet. Oh, Lord Jesus, so much going on, on the planet. Uh, any words of encouragement, any things of motivation, anything you want to say? Uh, Amy, you first before we get started. Well, uh, there is a lot going on. And, and the first thing I would say is to vote, participate. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. Would, I would leave it, leave it at that and just simply yeah. say, Absolutely. Yes. And the order, ladies and gentlemen, the order is register to vote and then vote. And then vote. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. I'm with you a thousand percent. Please understand we have a system in our United States that nobody on the planet probably has, right? Like we do, because the way it's secured and done properly well, you know, obviously it's not perfect, but it does allow the population that is registered and part of the nation to vote. So guys, I've been mean, up and down the ticket, and we know that, up and down the ticket. I don't care if it's the garbage man, right, garbage commissioner, whoever it is, all the way up to the president of the United States. So we have that opportunity. So please, as Amy just said, guys, please vote, but also register to vote, and we want to encourage you that. Dr. David, thank you so much, sir. What about you? Anything you'd like to say to the audience? Yeah, and I'll build on what Amy said. Um, we live in a unique time. There's so much information available to yeah. us right now in seconds. Yeah. Yeah. But not all of it is reliable. Not all of it is great okay. information. Yeah. But on the positive side, there is a lot of valuable information out there. And I think it's up to us to yeah. determine what is reliable and what is not. And I think right. it's really important for everybody out there yeah. to have that in mind. When they see a piece of information yeah. online, um, yeah. ask yourself, is this, is this reliable? Is this yeah. real information? Yeah. Um, and I think that that gives one a lot, that empowers people, right? When we know and we can scrutinize information and know what's real and what's not, that makes yeah. us powerful, right? Because we have reliable data, reliable information. Absolutely, thank you so much, Doc. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Power Connections with uh, Amy Moore and Dr. Uh, David Cavazos. Thank you so much. Hey, you know what? You guys just triggered another thought there on this area. I just wrote down two words, uh, Doc and Amy, thought, or to say thinking and research. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of thinking today and research? Just a little bit, Amy, from your perspective and Doc, you, you next. Well, it's important to know how to retrieve information in a way that yeah. substantiates your position. Yeah. And that's what we do. Right. You know, um, right. we, we help other people, others, other nonprofits substantiate Right. their position by retrieving information yeah. and, and helping them plan their retrieval of information as well yeah. so that they can bolster up their, their missions and their vision for their, their organization. Yeah, that's powerful. Powerful. I like that. Doc, your thoughts about that? Yeah. Um, and I think the key word is, I think the listeners should keep in mind is validity. Right. Yeah. What is valid? What is not valid? Um, I teach a course on evidence-based decision-making that's yeah. focused on managerial decision-making in terms of how do you use reliable data and yeah. information to make accurate decisions? Yeah. Yeah. And part of it is because there's so much information and data out there, right? Yeah. But I think the key word is validity. You right. know, one has to ask, what is valid? What right. is not 
valid at the very root of it. And of course, there's more sophisticated steps to that. But right. I think for just the average person, if you just think validity, what is valid? What right. is not valid? I think that's a key yeah. thing to understand when navigating the world today. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so glad that we were born when we were because, see, we ask a lot of questions. We just don't take what you say as, as, as gospel, right? We do our research, man. We say, I'll get back with you. Let me see. Uh, let me do some research on that. Now, we got another generation that will take and run with everything we say and be going in the wrong direction. You know? I said, man, Lord, help them all out there. Help them all. I love yes. it. Hey, guys, we're having a great time with uh, Amy Moore and Dr. Uh, De uh, De David today, and we're just excited about him being with him. I'm going to read their bio, man, because they require that, I believe, and they've also earned that as well. <laughs> as well. And let me go with Miss Amy Moore. Miss Amy Moore is a biostatistician. She's going to tell us a little bit more about that, what that is, with two masters of science degrees. See, she, see Doc, Dr. David, she looks, I mean, she just looks smart and brilliant and intelligent. <laughs> looking at it you know i said man you gotta have a phd or something in there you know master's degree two masters that's pretty cool uh in biostatistics and public health sciences guys miss moore is also a phd student in psychology i love it doc we gotta keep you on our board over here for sure no doubt about that education technology and learning i love it she has over 20 years guys of graduate level experience teaching statistics topics online and with the classroom setting god bless you for that uh, Sister Moore as well. Ms. Moore is a real, uh, has real world experience in the statistic analysis from the pharmaceutical industry, uh, academia, and the hospital setting. God bless you again. Wow, that's pretty cool. Ms. Moore has trained various physicians, nurses, and other researchers uh, to implement statistic analysis uh, for their studies, guys. Currently, Ms. Moore uh, is a 10-book author with titles such as Statistics Workbook for the Non-Techie, Statistics for the math illiterate and data queen, and so learning language of data, or I should say strata, excuse me, letting getting your feet wet with R. I love it, getting your feet wet with R, and then stat, statique. I get it. Statique, I love it. Cloud yeah. cleaning in your own words, math journal for graduate students, and out of the box, a, a, a statistics workbook using SAS, and we'll find out more about that as well on top of that. I want to love it. Hey, uh, Dr. David Cavazos, God, ladies and gentlemen, has an active research for, or been in active research for over 15 years. He holds a PhD in business administration and master's degree in public administration and a BA in economics. I love it. All about that money, guys. It's all about the money out there. Dr. Cavazos, ladies and gentlemen, has over 25 uh, peer review publication. And 31 now. 31. I love it. Let me, yeah, let me update that right this second. 31, man. 31. I like real time updates. Don't you the real time data? I love it. As publication has extensive experience in higher education and applied research. Dr. Cabasso's late gentleman has a proficiency in SPSS, SAS, and Excel for statistical analysis and SQL, I uh, love it, server for uh, relational and data retrieval. Got to have the data, folks. This also has ex uh, expertise in data coding and preparation. Guys, I can tell you one thing, it's all about the data, but you also got to know how to interpret it and how to understand what you're seeing as well. Wow. Once again, guys, welcome Ms. Amy Moore and Dr. David to Power Connections. Wow. Wow. Let's get started. Well, Amy, what, tell us a little about your journey to how you got to where you're at in a, outside of your bio. How did you get into this area? Because you are brilliant, smart, and Thank intelligent you. in this area. So how did you, this, I mean, did mom and dad help you? Did mom, uh, grandma help you? Who helped you? Who, who, who encouraged you to get here? <laughs> well, I was, I've been teaching since I was five. I used to, wow. I, I love, oh, yes, I used to love teaching. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, um, wow, you know, as I got older, though, I tried to chase money, which was not, you know, how we go to college and we go, well, OK, what kind of job will we get? Yeah. And it just evolved at some point into teaching. statistics, yes, yes. And from there, I developed, you know, uh, two entities, more statistics. Mm hmm. LLC, which is for other doctoral students who are trying to get their their degrees, and we help with um, with their uh, statistics in terms, in terms of their dissertations. Yeah. 
for the nonprofit, which I'm here to talk to you about today, we're, we're yeah. helping other nonprofits with their statistics because there's yeah. a lot of people out there who do not know right. what it takes to develop their statistical infrastructure. Right. So we help. Yes. And we also help with um, assisting people who have just graduated from college yes. and they're trying to get a job and they do not have statistical experience and we're we help them get experience as well through yeah. our our efforts yeah yes. i love it i love it so uh you know so amy as you're talking there so what are some of the first uh steps i obviously need to contact you of course uh you are dr david but what are the first steps that they need to consider when they're having their board meetings when they're having their planning meetings <laughs> all the above uh, before they really get into areas that they may not understand, but they're going to need help in. What's some of the, the pre-planning things? That's, that's what I want to ask you. What's the pre-planning steps they should take before they get started on their journey with their nonprofit or any type of uh, business area? Well, as they're putting their nonprofit together, it's yeah. ideal to know what, what are your outcomes? What are you trying to achieve? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to help a, a particular demographic and right. are you trying to help a specific quantity each right. year? Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things that we would ask during a meeting with them. Fantastic. Yes. That's good. So it's important to really have you guys in on the boardroom too. Is that, is that correct? To have you in the boardroom meetings to ask so they can ask questions on their planning? Because uh, unless they have a statistician or somebody in that area uh, on the board, uh, they're going to need some outside help consulting. Is that correct? Yes, and definitely, uh, like we have a uh, str strategic planning in terms of statistics, and yeah. Dr. Cavazos can speak towards that because he's our specialist. Yeah, yeah. Planning, yes. Oh, I love it. That's so, great. Yeah, so guys, we're, we're talking about, and we want to encourage our nonprofits guys to really uh, pay attention today. So we've got a lot of nonprofits on the network. So we guys, you guys, if you don't have a, a planner or you don't have a person that understands these areas, you're going to have to talk to Amy and also Dr. David on this area as well. Okay, guys, so we're getting getting that area. You know, uh, Amy, I want to continue with this because I'm big on planning and a lot of organizations don't pre-plan. They just mm -hmm. jump into it, which is fine in some areas, I guess, but you have to have a plan. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of planning for this as well? I'm talking talk about budgets too, because they got to pay you. It ain't free, right? <laughs> they got to pay you. <laughs> right, well, we... We, we were big on pre-planning and actually, okay, what type, like I was saying before, what types of outcomes yeah. are you collecting right. and what is your, your projection? What, how many years will you be following out this particular right. graphic or whatever your objective is? Mm -hmm. And um, it requires illustrations. It requires graphics. It right. requires you know, statistics. Right, right. And so that you can quantify and you can see, hey, we're doing a great job this year or here, right. no, we're not doing such a great job. And right. let's discuss the the changes that are needed for us to make it to yeah. our, our targets. I love it. That's great. Yes, our target numbers. Yeah, yes. exactly. So that actually we said great right over to David Cavazos and, and talk about that data because I know charts and data and uh, statistics got to be seen, right? It's not just to be in an the, the Excel spreadsheet or whatever, or software, it's got to be seen as well, mainly for the boardroom, for the president, for the CEOs, whoever, they need to see these uh, numbers and understand the numbers. So doc, again, uh, the same question to you, how important is pre-planning to have this information uh, uh, in front of them so they can make some good decisions? Yeah, so I think at the heart of it all is understanding your organization's strategy, yeah. right? And, and behind that, of course, is the vision of the organization and what its its values are, yes, right? Sir. And that, that kind of gives you a roadmap to what are we going to do, but more importantly, what are we not going to do, right? And once an organization has that basic understanding of who they are, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is alignment, aligning operations and programs and tasks yeah. to what their strategic objectives are. And I think one of the big challenges in planning is, Organizations are great at planning, right? They do their SWOT analysis, they yeah, have their yeah. objectives, yeah. and they get ready to go. But then you have to tie activities to those objectives. And yeah. more importantly, you have to tie performance measures to those activities. 
And that's where statistics comes in and analytics comes in. Mm -hmm. I think one of the pitfalls of strategy today is uh, folks tend to take kind of a softer view of strategy where it's more of an opinion. Like, what do we think works? What do we think is valuable? Which that's great, but you have to know what actually is valuable, what actually works. That's where performance measures come in. Um, so that's where we come in. We kind of bridge that gap between objectives, yeah. strategy, and data, right? And how to use those three in concert with each other to create the strategic alignment that yeah. all organizations need, nonprofit, for-profit, government. I think that's, and it's a huge uh, gap in yeah. the practice right now. And it always has been. I think every strategy textbook yeah. points yeah. to the fact that, well, most managers are great at planning, but not right. great execution, right. right? So we focus on that execution end of things. Because you got to understand what you're looking at. I mean, you know, that's why you guys are so important, Doc and, and, and Amy. You guys have to, you guys understand what, what's on the paper and what's coming out of the system. And whether they like it or not on the result, that's up to them, right? <laughs> but you can at least tell them the truth about what the data says as well. You know, I wrote down too, Doc and Amy, while you were talking, is that, old ways may not still work because our, our, our systems is changing so fast. You know, the world is changing. Matter of fact, it's changing as we speak right now somewhere uh, in the area of data. Uh, so Amy, I wanted to talk to you. How, how, we need to get out of our old way of thinking sometime too, these organizations. Is that a correct statement? We can't use what we did last year, maybe, the same way we needed to do it this year and going forward. Does that make sense? That makes well, sense. a lot of our clients are starting from ground zero, meaning that they're not very yeah. familiar with statistics. And so yeah. what we like to do is build a, a system of working that yeah. they can take and use for the future. Yeah. And yeah. then if they have other outcomes that have popped up that they were not considering before, then we can meet with them right. and discuss it. Yeah. And you earlier yeah. you mentioned how much does it cost? And with yeah. us, the, eventually there is a cost, but with right. us, we like to talk to people and get a sense of what right. you have. Yeah, the yeah, assessment, if you will. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's I wish you on that. valuable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm a thousand percent. Yeah, I do the same thing on my end. We have to assess what your needs are first, right? Right. You yes. may not need me. You may need to talk to Dr. David directly or Dr. Uh, Sister Amy directly uh, in that area. So, yeah, that's a, absolutely right, because most of the time they don't know what they need because they're not expertise in that area. And I do understand. Yes. Matter of fact, I, I had to change that years ago. I would give them everything I did, and then I found out they didn't need me. <laughs> they needed something else, you know. And that's powerful. So that's great wisdom there as well. Hey, guys, this is for those listening live. This is Power Connections with my wonderful guest today, uh, Miss Amy Moore, ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. David Cavazos. So thank you so much again. Hey, guys, as we continue on, uh, I love this area because it's all about planning, understanding your 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 area of, uh, of direction, what they call what we call true north, as you know, as well. We got to really know our true north, right? Because as you yes. know, ladies and gentlemen, any degree off of true north, you're not going to get to your destination. You got to know exactly where you're going. Doc, I wanted to ask you the same question about getting away from the old ways versus uh, what we really need to do based on data. Absolutely. So I think the tendency is we have to change, right? The times are changing. We have to change. Sometimes the question is, should we change? And I think from an organization standpoint, so the decision makers have to consider um, not just adopting the best, newest, brightest thing, mm-hmm. it's well, what, what are the implications for our organizations if we adopt the best, new, bright, shiny thing? So AI is a great example. Yeah. Um, when one's adapting, say they want to change their creative processes and shift it to AI. Yes, sir. Right? The old way was having meetings, making right. a decision, and then going with it and writing up a, a draft and mm-hmm. then kind of running the numbers. Say they want to decide and they change, well, let's just do AI with that. But yeah. then... Before that decision is made, they have to ask themselves, what is this serving as a substitute for, yeah. right? And yeah. if you think about it, say the organization has meetings to decide what they're going to go with and they want to yeah. substitute that with AI, right. well, think about what that's eliminating. It's eliminating interaction among colleagues that, that are generative, right? These interactions generate true ideas and they yes, generate sir. culture, yeah. right? Sometimes substituting something for that can actually be harmful. Right. So I think in terms of this question of 
changing and adopting the old ways to new, I think the question is, when should we not adopt the old ways to new? Because sometimes those old ways of doing things, they create intangible value that sometimes our managers don't recognize. Right. Sometimes you do need to change, right? Obviously, sometimes yeah, change exactly. is necessary, and we know a lot about that. But I think another question is, well, when should we not change? When right. should we not adapt, right? And I think the fundamental question, yeah. or the fundamental answer to that question is, well, what are we replacing with yeah. this change? Yeah. And sometimes, especially the intangible interactions, the intangible resources organizations have, yeah. can sometimes be disrupted right. with hasty changes. Um, so I think that's an important question to ask oneself before a change is, is implemented yeah. or decided upon. Absolutely. And that's why I think it's important, Amy and Doc, that they have you uh, in that process in the beginning uh, so they so you guys can at least be there to hear. You know, you may not say a lot until you need to, but you're, you're actually in the room seeing the planning going a certain way. And, I, and the reason why I'm also a Six Sigma a green belt, so you know the, the value of value stream mapping. And uh, I tell you, man, that's a powerful tool. And uh, it takes some time, but if you if you stream out and, and value map out or map out your process, both current and as you know, future, you'll you'll come up with those areas you're talking about. And uh, but it takes time. It also takes somebody to do that, right? Because somebody needs to facilitate it, as you know. And we got to have you guys in the room to see if we're going in the right direction. So you guys would be great facilitators if I'm not if I understand your processes as well yes. for people starting off. In this area, that's powerful. Any any comment about that, uh, Amy? About the importance of mapping out some things <laughs> too, as well. <laughs> well, I mean, that's um, basically what we do is we yeah. have to sit there with them and map out. Yeah. Okay, what what does this look like? What yeah. exactly are you trying to capture? Yeah. Uh, what software will you use? Right. What software do you have access to? Yeah. And we try to give them um, practical. Yeah advice yeah we're not going to say hey why don't you use uh this software here right. that's like very complicated to use right. something user friendly that their organization could take and yeah go with yeah so yeah that's good i like that you know also too amy i was thinking again I'm, again because we've done this before uh, i gotta ask you about for the nonprofits about budgets uh, they have budgets, but they may not have the budget in this area, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. set up for this area. How important and what's uh, needed for that area? If you would just comment on on the importance of the budget for this uh, initial analysis, if you will, in order to make sure they're not spending in so much money. You know, like, so, for example, uh, I had one organization, you know, they purchased the wrong software initially, right? But then they had to go purchase the right software. And they didn't necessarily have the budget for that. So, you know, because... Uh, people told them the wrong thing or didn't do the research. Uh, Amy, first, how, how important is that, please, uh, on that area? Uh, well, um, ideally, the organization will be using, we would recommend using software that's free. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like Excel is free. Everybody yeah. has access. Yeah, it should have it already, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But somebody has to know how to use Excel <laughs> to, his right. to the proper level, you know, because I know this training is advanced training for that, as you know. I know a lot of yes. accountants and at your level know that already. But uh, yeah, we got to make sure. But most of the time, the people that are uh, uh, that are responsible for that Excel spreadsheet or whatever doesn't don't have the full training. Not to say they can't do it. It's just that they don't have the training on it. So that's important. So, Doc, does that make sense, too, as well, what Amy was saying? Yeah, and really in the long run, even in the medium term, uh, when organizations make the right decisions regarding what processes they should adopt and which ones they shouldn't, yeah. they wind up saving uh, resources, right? So it's easier on the budget to make the right decisions at the right time, yeah. right? Going back to your example, sometimes uh, a manager might hastily decide to yeah. create some software that it turns out is not the right software or some processes that are not the right processes then they have to pivot and adopt the ones that work. Well, that ends up costing you more. Whereas yeah. if you bring in someone from the outside, right. um, um, Henry Mintzberg, a a, one of these management gurus once said, if managers just look at themselves and their organization, mm -hmm. it's the equivalent of us making our decisions by just looking at ourselves in the mirror, yeah. right? We don't take in any outside information. It's just, you're mm -hmm. looking at yourself, mm -hmm. right? And too many organizations, they look at themselves in the mirror. They yeah. don't, bring in an outside perspective. And sometimes that outside perspective, or many times, it does ultimately result in cost savings. Mm -hmm. so 
while sometimes, uh, say, a nonprofit might be thinking, well, should we hire a consultant? Should right. we hire someone to help us with our strategy or with our analytics? Well, it's going to cost X, Y, Z. That's right. It is going to cost, but then they have to consider right. how much is this actually going to save us if, if it's All done right. Right. It usually right. ends up saving them money, saving them resources, yeah. up their budget to focus on other things. Right. Exactly. So again, it's about doing the right things at the right time and yeah. in the right way. Right. And a lot of times you need external folks, you know, an external set of eyes to review yeah. what the organization is doing. Absolutely, doc. Just Absolutely. looking in the mirror. Right. That's yeah, exactly. Doc. Yeah. You've got to ask that question. So for all the nonprofits out there, all the, I should say all the leaders of nonprofits, CEOs, presidents, uh, founders, all of the above, you've got to have the plan here. You've got to have uh, Amy and you've got to have a uh, Dr. David on the network, guys, so they can uh, pop a counsel, counsel you in that area. With that said, we got to go to a commercial break right now, Amy and Dr. D. How can folks get in touch with you, Amy? How can folks get in touch with you and say, I need to learn more about this? You can reach us, well, email. My email is morestatfoundation at gmail.com. And I will get back to you. No problem. And the website, get that website out. I think the you... website is morestatisticsconsultingfoundation.org. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. That, that website, everything's right there. That's where you can get in touch with Dr. Yes. D. And also uh, the Sister Amy there on that network there. So, guys, that's where you can book your time. But that's for the nonprofits and for the all the leaders of nonprofits, and even the board. You guys need to have a talk with them about these areas. We want your 2025 to be better than 2024. That's for sure. <laughs> we yes. want that to happen for you as well. And, of course, October. I think October is the tax year for everybody, you know, where people start revamping their budgets or whatever. October, November, whatever, you guys need to get them on your call right now, guys. You need to call them as soon as possible, and we're going to have them give their website out and that email later on again as well. I love it as, as well. You know, Doc, I didn't ask you as well. How did you get to your journey to to get to where you're at today, sir? What, what was that influence there? Mom and dad or, you know, it, somebody influenced you? It wasn't linear, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, my parents were immigrants from Mexico, um, first generation, grew up on the U.S.-Mexico border. Yeah, I love it. Um, wow. Di didn't have any intention of going into academia. I mean, in fact, I, 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 when I first went to college, I was a music major. You know, I studied classical wow. guitar for one year. Wow. Although I still play a lot of guitar, I, I, yeah. I, I pivoted to economics. And that's not wow. a natural pivot, but one of the great things is uh, my family always encouraged us to read and to be yeah. curious. Yeah. And so I, and I, I liked philosophy and I liked literature. And it's amazing that economics yeah. is very theoretical. So there's an alignment between philosophy and even literature and economics. So for me, economics was appealing. Um, and I was very weak in math. So my ethos was always, well, college is to address your weaknesses. So I just took a math class every semester I was in college. Mm -hmm. And so I wound up minoring in math. Um, then I wound up being a math teacher. Uh, I loved teaching, but I still had the curiosity. I, I started reading more political economy, um, industrial organization. Uh, so I'm just very curious about that. So, of course, then, yeah. you know, when you're curious and you also have the math mathematical mind and you're also creative, you ask yourself, well, how do I how can I use those three in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, research, research and teaching. And that, of course, led me to my doctoral program. Oh, I love it, man. That's great. Man, Doc, I'm so excited and proud of you, man. And uh, it's amazing what time will do for you. You know, when somebody says, well, you'll never do that and you end up doing it. I love that. Persistence. Persistence is key. My first <laughs> semester in college, I had to take remedial math. I love it. Um, <laughs> and I just decided I'm going to keep taking that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I did. I was, it seemed crazy at the time. And sometimes I questioned it when I was taking yeah. advanced calculus and differential equations as a junior in college oh. and <laughs> trying to pull yeah. a B. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, it, but it, you know, it made life easier when I was taking all those high level statistics as a PhD student. So. Yeah, I love it, man. That's great. Hey guys, we're here with Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn today with my wonderful guest, Ms. Amy Moore and Dr. David Cavos. And we're just excited about him being with uh, with us today. Uh, Amy, I wanted to, I'm going to ask you guys two more questions here. One, I would like for you to say a few words to our educators out there. As you know, our, our educational system needs a little help <laughs> out there. Please help yes. us. Anyway, yes. you would say something to our educators, specifically all the uh, leaders that will talk about our board of directors uh, and also even uh, the teachers, of course, but mainly the principals and things like that, that they got to 
look at these areas. And then the other area we're going to talk about is our young people. I want you to talk to our young people about getting into these areas that you're in, too, as they uh, graduate from high school, as they go to college and consider uh, these areas as well. But Amy, let's talk to our educators. Anything you'd like to share uh, to our educators? Because, because, you know, that's where the foundation should be laid, in my opinion. What you do as an educator. Um, the one thing that I remember, I can recall. Yeah. When I was teaching a course. Yes, ma'am. That's very important not to make it too linear. Right. Give them something to think about. Yeah. Give them some sort of mental exercise. Yeah. Because that's what I remember when I think back to all the jobs I had and all of the schooling I had is that mental exercise to yeah. solve a problem and connect logic. Yeah. And I think that translates to real life, too, when you have yeah. people and they're interacting and there's a mm -hmm. the logic has to be there. Right. Yes. So I think that's very important to yeah. have them go through some sort of problem, a, a problem set or yeah. something yeah. that yeah. will make them exercise that muscle. Yes. Yes. Yeah, amen. I like that part. Right, you know, Amy and Doc, I was just thinking because I was I wrote this down. Matter of fact, I got to put together a program for this. But we want I, I'm good. I'm going to be putting a program to, together on the why. Why do we do this? You know, a lot of people don't know why they need this. They keep saying, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Don't need that. Don't need math. Don't need statistics. Don't need, uh, you know, whatever the history. They don't think they'll never use it. We got to teach them the why. There's a why behind all of this. And of course, you never figure it out till you get older. <laughs> I figured a lot of stuff when I got older. I couldn't, I was real good in history, but I didn't know why I needed it. But now I know why I needed it, you know, for sure. So we got to teach the why. So thank you so much for that, Amy. Doc, same thing for you. What would you say to our educators today, sir? Uh, and I'll go like a whole different direction because, yeah, yeah, what Amy said is spot on. Yeah. Um, but yeah. one of the things I think I found, and this is from my experience from being middle school teacher. Yeah. high school teacher and now university professor is and this is something i think a lot of times our teachers forget is right. the interactions we have with our students matter and they matter more than we realize um, and i have two examples from that one when i was a university professor you know we meet with students every day in our offices mm -hmm. um, one day i received a postcard from a student and his name was i don't think he'd mind if he knew i mentioned his name his name was teddy mcnab he was gotcha. a student of mine at James Madison University, a mm -hmm. business major. Uh, he would come into my office a lot, and we'd always talk about the importance of service and society mm -hmm. and you know, knowledge. Yes. But when I get a postcard from him, and this was when I was a professor at another institution even. I was in the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. I get a postcard from him from Africa. He's actually mm -hmm. building communities uh, and organizing public services in Africa now, and he said, Love Our it. conversations inspired me to use my knowledge in a broader way. And and this may sound sad or trite, but I had forgotten all about yeah, it. Right. Yeah. But it realizes sometimes these conversations we have yeah. with our students as educators that we take yeah. for granted or we think yeah. of just part of our workday, they yeah. can be extremely powerful Absolutely. for the students. And yeah. I even had one in middle school. I had a student, you know, Message me one day on Facebook, a former student that I had probably 30 years ago when I taught seventh yeah. grade math. Yeah. She said one day, you know, she was sitting you know, outside in the hall and I just smiled at her and said, hello, how are you? And, yeah. and that changed the whole way she looked at teachers, just that simple little gesture. Yeah. So I think one of the things educators forget is our interactions with students can be extremely powerful, even just little things like that, to say nothing about the classroom. Right. Yeah. So I think teachers, they ha I think yeah. we have to remind ourselves we're yeah. way more powerful in shaping students' lives than we think. Oh. And the slightest interaction could yeah. change a student forever. And oh. I think we have to remember that, especially in those tough days. I know with, with uh, especially secondary school teachers, yeah. it's a tough job. There's a lot they have to handle and juggle right at the same time. Yeah. Um, I think if they remember that, I think it'll kind of help them make it through when they know that I'm powerful. I could shape students live yes. by just having a conversation with them. Absolutely. But, yeah. that, that is incredible. Amy, that was powerful right there with Doc said, and you said, I yes. love it. Yeah, I love it. Matter of fact, quick, we got to give a quick shout out to all our educators on the planet. 
anybody who's an educator at all levels, we love you. We're excited about you. You do change our lives, uh, whether you know it or not, because I, I'm going to give you a quick example, God. I literally had to find in middle school, I had a powerful art teacher. I guess I got all A's in art for some reason. Didn't know how I enjoyed art so much. But anyway, I found I wanted to find my art teacher, guys. I didn't know if she was still with us or not, but I found my art teacher from middle school in um, through Facebook through her daughter, right? Just happened to have the name, same last name. I located her daughter, found out her mom's still with her, and I just wanted to thank her for all she did. I literally had a chance to I'm thank her uh, on uh, Facebook there and let just let her know how successful I was and what I was doing with my family. And it was powerful, man. I just wanted to thank her. And I got several others. That was my math teacher. I made sure I get, went to college. I thanked her. I still keep in touch with her out of Savannah. Incredible. I got another music teacher that was with uh, in high school. I thank her. Keep in touch with her. But thank you, teachers. Thank you for all you do. Never stop. I know some teachers are yes. getting discouraged today. But never stop because you changed the world for people. And they did it for me, and I did it for you, both of us, uh, all three of us, actually, here today as well. So thank you so much, teachers. I just want to give a shout out, uh, Dr. David and uh, and uh, and Amy, for that, because they are powerful, powerful people. And uh, we just got to keep them lifted up and encouraged as well on top of that. Yes. Wow, that is so cool. I love it. Hey, guys, this is Power Connections with uh, Amy Moore, guys, and Dr. David Cavazos. I'm thanking them so much. This is powerful, guy. You know we got to do some more of these, right? <laughs> this is powerful. Yes. Yeah, there's Definitely. more of these on topic, and I love it as well. Hey, guys, I want to give you some uh, thought here. If you would, Amy, how to get in touch with you. For those who say, I want to get in touch with you guys on the website. What's that website again, please, Amy, if you don't mind? More, more Statistics. That's with two O's. So more statistics, consulting foundation.org. Uh, fantastic. And Amy and Doc, do you guys do speaking engagements as well? Do you come out and speak to other organizations about these topics? We're open to it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah I, want, yeah, I want to encourage that. Yeah, exactly. So, guys, if you have any type of platform, I'm talking about te television, media, right? Radio, podcast, whatever, any type of show that you have, I want you to invite Amy and Doc on your programs to talk about these areas, you guys. It's powerful. Not only is it stimulating for adults, it's going to be stimulating for our young people, guys, as well. As they try to figure out what they want to do with their life, they may want to do this. They may want to be a Dr. Amy, a, a Sister Amy, uh, Amy Moore, or Dr. David. You, you know, you never know, guys. But the goal, you know, what we found out, Doc and Amy, is that all we want to do is give them exposure. Yes. So possible. Yes. Yeah, I got a good friend of mine. He says all we want to do is expose the children to what's possible. I yes. said, amazing. Just let them know what's available. A lot of them just don't know, right? Right. And I heard our career counselors are not doing their job, in my opinion. That's what they said. They're not doing the job properly in this high school and, and middle schools. So they're not doing the proper job. This is the best job. I'll say that. They're not, they're not letting the children know that they can be anything they want to be. And yeah, and sometimes student interest, they could be unexpected. I, yeah. I think of my own experience. I loved music. I loved yeah. reading. Yeah. Um, and I loved writing. Yeah. And then you think, well, what career tracks could that result in? And sometimes students may think, well, I can't do anything with this, right. but you totally can. Yeah. I mean, you could use yeah. those those talents to yeah. another in in many many ways. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, I love it. Yeah, because we're talking about well, we talk about a whole range of stuff with teaching and training and just helping other people right grow or just encouraging somebody. That's just four right there off the top of my head. But it is so powerful. I love it. That's why I love power connections with you guys today as well. Hey, let's go to final thoughts and takeaways today, Doc. No, excuse me, Amy. Amy, first, uh, Amy, what any any final thoughts and takeaway for today? Just keep pursuing your dreams. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of opportunities in STEM because we yes. represent STEM. There's so yeah. many opportunities. Absolutely. And and just we're here to if you would like to talk to us just to get a sense of, you know, what's out there. Yep. Amen. You know, we do offer internships, we do offer people an opportunity to work with us. Hmm. And help us assist us with projects. So yeah, yes. that's wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. And Doc, get that website out again for those who are just joining us. Maybe didn't hear their website, so they can do their research there. Oh, it's yeah. I'm sorry, oh. Doc, Amy. I'm sorry, Amy. You give that website um, out. Again. Thank you. More more statistics consultingfoundation.org. 
All right. Thank you so much. You know, I just thought about our parents too, right? Our parents, you need to call uh, Amy and Doc too and get some appointments and learn more about what they do as well uh, for your family as well on top of that. Doc, any final thoughts, sir, for you? Uh, final Absolutely. thoughts and, and takeaways today? Yeah. First of all, in terms of our foundation, you know, we're not just statistics. So I think if an right. organization needs executive coaching in any way, if they need help in planning, strategy, mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, if they if they require some analytics and statistics to work in with that, we're available. So yes. it's one of those if you have if you have any doubt, reach out and and we could figure something out. Uh, yeah. We have a broad range of talents in our organization now. In terms of the bro a broader level, kind of yeah. final thoughts for the audience. It's just keep asking questions. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Don. Live in a complicated world. Yeah. There's a lot of information out there, and right. I think if you ask questions and you ask yourself what's valid, what's invalid, um, I think you'll be okay. Yes, yes, exactly. I was just writing down, be a seeker of knowledge, folks. Be Absolutely. a seeker of knowledge and information. Yes. Ask questions. Doc just mentioned that, guys. Ask questions. Add, challenge things, okay, uh, respectfully, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yes. challenge things, guys, and ask questions. That's what Amy Moore is here for and Dr. David Cavazios is here for today is to help you think, guys, and give you some direction towards your true north. Once we find out where you want to go, we can help you guys. We can help point you in that direction. And if we don't know, I'm going to find out for sure <laughs> about for that. that there's so yeah. much information out there. There's, there's no way we can fail. There's just no way you can fail if you just understand and, and never quit. Wow, this is incredible. That is so great. Well, Amy Moore and Dr. David, this is powerful, man. I'm excited. Woo, we, can keep yeah. you guys, we could keep you guys for another half hour. Easy, man. But we're not going to do that today. <laughs> but we definitely love this area because it's, it's education, it's planning, it's success, and it's all the above for the nonprofits, uh, for our educators, for our students, for our, you know all the above, guys. We're just excited about that. So, Amy, if you would give that website out one more time, we want to make sure everybody hears that website as much as possible here today. <laughs> so it's morestatisticsconsultingfoundation.org. Amen. And guys, you guys hit me up on the network if you need to have that website again, okay, on how to get in touch with uh, Doc and Amy here uh, on that wonderful, wonderful website as well. We're just excited about that. Hey, guys, we're getting ready to wind this wonderful day up there. Hey, it's a new week, uh, guys, and we're just excited about uh, you today. And this is why we call it Power of Connections, because we have Ms. Amy Moore and Dr. David Cavazos here with us today. Ah, uh, Doc. Man, thank you so much for your time today. Thank Amy, you so thank you so much for your thank time you. today. Wow, incredible, incredible. Hey, we want to leave you with something real quick, guys, as we get out of here real quick for today. We want you to have a great rest of the day. Be productive. Be also intentional, guys. I love that word, intentional. Be intentional today, guys, with, with all you can do today. And also, most of all, have a great and productive week, as my uh, mentor would always remind me. Always remember to out love, out serve, now forgive each other. And remember, there's nothing you can do with the right people in your life. We're talking about Amy Moore and Dr. David Cavazos, who can help you guys uh, as you navigate your journey uh, in business and in life as well. So thank you so much again, Doc. And so much. Hold on a minute. Before we close out. But thank you so much. I want to salute you guys today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. <laughs> All right, guys. And hey, we want you guys to share this out on your platforms. This is going to go out on 10 platforms on the MLT network so people can listen to this all around the world. I guys want you to share this out on your platforms. But don't forget to invite them on your platforms as well to share uh, their wonderful topics that they have. And we're just excited about you guys doing that as well. I want to thank you in advance as well. Hey, this is uh, Kevin Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen, and my wonderful guest today, again, Amy Moore and Dr. David Colossos. Thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you next time on the network. God bless you.